Hello, my name is Castle and welcome to the Destiny Item Manager video part two. This is the video where I show you how to use the loadout optimizer to achieve the perfect build for your character. I don't just show you the functionality of the loadout optimizer itself, but I also walk you through the process on how I use it and all the little minute tips and tricks that can really make a difference and how to find them using specific filtering systems. If you haven't seen my dim part one video, I highly recommend you watch it. There's a link right there above. It explains how your gear is a lot better than you think, but this video is super long and oh Shut my up God. And start it. You're welcome. Okay, just wait. No one got the freaking guess last week. Go back to the first video. Check out the comments on what guesses have been made. No one's got it yet. How many are in that jar? All right, so from the main page, what you want to do is click on the loadout optimizer button right there. Yeah, let's optimize, motherfucker. It'll bring you to a brand new page where it's showing you all the possible combinations of your build. And then what it's telling me is that with all the gear that I have, there are 21,806,400 possible stat combinations. $100 billion. We're only looking at about 500,000 of them. So the reason they're doing that is to prevent DIM from crashing because if they have all these people out there in the world looking at DIM at the same time, doing this at yeah. the same time, and on their server, they have to calculate, you know, 20 million possibilities for every single person all at once, it would continue to crash. It won't really matter anyways, because we're going to apply filters, but just so you're aware. So here's what it's showing me. It says T29, T stands for tier. So what it does here on the left-hand side is it adds up all the tiers across my gear and tells me the total. So right now it's telling me that the best I can have is 29. But the beauty is that this system omits mods because in my video leading up to this, I talk about how mods being on some gear versus other makes things misleading and difficult to figure out what the true best end game build is. So what the developers of DIM have done is completely stripped mods out because you can apply a stat mod like recovery or discipline to any piece of gear. So that's one, two, three, four, five mods that we know we can add. So I already know just from that, that this 29 is actually a 34. On the left-hand side is all the stuff that you can use to your advantage for comparing one build to another build, for example. And I'm gonna show you how to use those to find the absolute perfect build for yourself. First and foremost, this little checkbox right here, assume masterwork. So by default, it is not checked. What that means is that it's going to show you the best possible build that you could make today right now without spending any more material because i have some gear that's already masterworked it's naturally going to show me those because masterworking gear adds 12 stats to each piece of armor or conversely it adds 10 points to every single stat type like mobility resilience recovery etc if some of you are just looking for your best build today that's fine leave that unchecked but for me i'm always looking for what's the best build i can have eventually now that i've done that that, that actually brought me from T29 to T31. So it's saying, hey, once you masterwork all the gear, this is the most you can possibly find. As I said before, that's pre-mod. So that would turn this into 36. If I added powerful friends even just once, it would be 38, but we won't get into that just yet. So now I know that this is the highest I could possibly do, 31 total tiers with a couple of options too. If you look here, I've got this first row as an option. I've got another option down here, a third, a fourth, a fifth. I've got five different combinations that I can have 31 total stat tiers. And it's important to look at those because A, they've got random exotics on them. Some don't even have exotics. And B, they have certain breakdowns that maybe I don't even care about. Like for example, maybe I don't want seven resilience and this 31 build is a total waste. So the second thing that I do is pay attention to what build I'm trying to make. In this case for my Titan, I love the Dune Marchers. Did you see that? Yo! Yeah, Woo! And so that's what I want to lock. So if you look down here, there's a way to actually lock a specific item that you want to keep on all possible builds. So it's basically like limiting all of these options down to ones that use that specific piece. Now it's bringing up all my gear, right? So I have to go and find the dune marchers. If I have too much and this is just way too overwhelming, I can actually just type up here. If I just type in dune, bam, it's going to show me the two dune marchers that I have. Now, some people might think, oh, I better use the one with the higher stat roll. Well, guess what? Sometimes 
just like I said in my first video, the lower stat roll armor has the exact stat distribution that you need for the perfect build. So if you have multiple versions of this exotic, I do not recommend locking the item. In fact, I don't really like to lock any of my gear because then it's limiting me significantly. So what I typically do, if I'm going to lock something, I'm just going to lock a ghost because a ghost is going to have no impact at all on my build. Notice that it went from 21 million down to 10 million. Then what I like to do is lock my mark or cloak, bond, whatever. So I recognize the affinity difference between your class items, change what mods you can use. These don't come with stat distributions anyways, so it really doesn't matter. So I'll lock that next. Now that I know all my builds are going to show me the same ghost and the cloak, I'm down to just my four pieces of gear that I care about. Back to the Dune Marcher piece, instead of locking a specific Dune Marcher, what you can do is use the really powerful filtering button, Mod or Perk Locking. Oh, please tell us! So what I'll do is click on that and it pulls up every single perk or mod that you could ever have on an armor. And then it breaks it out into sections with some quick links here at the top. So for me, the Dune Marchers can be uniquely identified by their perk that comes with the boots. So I'll click on legs. I'll scroll down until I find my perks specific to my boots. In this case, linear actuators. When I click on it, it shows up right here at the bottom. I hit select perks and then that's when it gets applied. But just one more thing before I dive into that, if you don't have the funds to change the affinities on your gear and you know you need very specific affinity on your armor that's shown all right here, then you can actually lock that as well. Click select mod or perk. Say you made a sniper, right? You click on helmet, you scroll down and you wanna lock void down here. What that's gonna do is add void here at the bottom for me. And this is basically saying only show me helmets that are of the the void affinity so I can put on my sniper rifle targeting, for example. Here we go. Look at these rows. All of them show void in my helmet. I personally do not recommend this. Listen to me. The reason I say that is because you're going to severely limit the number of builds that you can make. It's more important, in my opinion, to get the perfect stat distribution and then work your way up to changing those affinities than it is to just limiting your affinities. But again, the option is definitely there. So onto the filtering. The number one filter I put on immediately is minimum recovery. I talked about how I only play with 100 recovery, so I set my minimum recovery to T5. That means don't show me any builds after being masterwork that are going to give me less than 50 recovery. I set it to five to begin with because I know that if I add the five mods on every single piece of armor, then I'll end up with T10 here. So that means that this build is actually more of a 5, 5, 10, 3, 5, 7, which isn't too bad but there's still a lot of things that I don't like about this. I would be a lot happier if say this was three and this guy was five. So maybe there's a better build out there. And you might be thinking, well, this is the only row castle that's showing you T30, right? This is T30 and the next one, which Dim organizes by the way, in best to worst, the next row is already showing T29, T29. So if I scroll down, none of them will be T30. So now what I have to accept is, okay, if I want this to be three, Three, I recognize that it's the only T30 out there. Maybe there's a build out there where this is four. So this goes down by two, but this goes up by one. And to me, that is absolutely worth it in this case. However, there's other things that I don't like about this. I don't really like seven strength. That is way too much strength for me. So that's another three stats that are being unused. So we can do a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this void helmet right off the bat. Go back to what I was currently showing you before. And Dim has methods of helping you prioritize the fact that there's so many rows. Like somebody can't just sit here and look at every single row. It'll take you hours and hours and hours, right? Because at the very top, even with all these filters on, it's still showing me 2,500 hundred different stat mixes. So what I can do is actually say, all right, I don't like resilience. So just ignore it for me. And when I hit ignore, it actually just grays this out and it changes these to be blank. Bye, so in case you didn't notice before, let me just explain what these are. It's telling me what the minimum and maximum amounts that I can have. So I can go as low as 20 mobility and as high as 90 mobility. Back to the fact that resilience, when I hit ignore, goes to blank. The beautiful thing here is that now it's going to reprioritize those 25 500 stat mixes the way I want to see them. It's going to show me the original tier numbers, 29. You'll note that it's not showing me the T30. And that's because the T30, remember, the T30 came with five resilience 
resilience. It's showing me the highest total tier across the pieces that I care about, which is all of these. It's excluding resilience. So it's saying, look, across these five stat mixes, T26. And then it recognizes that I'm going to have three resilience in this particular build. So it's telling me that it would end up working out to 29 total tiers. Now, if I scrolled down all the way, I would eventually find that T30. It would just be far down this list where eventually I'm into the tier five resiliences, but I don't want to do that yet. Quick side tangent. If you're following along while doing it on your own and you're getting a lot of year one armor because you're a hoarder, you can apply filters on this as well. So if I type is arm armor 2.0 and it'll omit all the pieces of armor 1.0 at this point we've kind of reached the stage where i start to play around i know that 29 is roughly the amount that i want because that t30 had five resilience so if i'm gonna start playing around with these filters even more i just have to remember that hey i was able to have 29 total tiers with only a recovery filter on so if i'm gonna start adding more and more filters and shortening the scope of items that i'm looking at i gotta keep that in mind that don't go too far away from 29 tiers but it's okay to maybe go down to 27 or 28. Let's start with mobility. I know that I don't really need seven mobility. That's just too much on a Titan for my preference and tighten that filtering to be between four to six mobility. And remember, as long as I know I'm adding up to 29 total tiers, I know I'm not over filtering my system. Here's a build, still 29 total tiers. The mobility's got six, which means instead of seven mobility, it took that one tier out of mobility and it sent it somewhere else that I actually care about. That's a lot better for me. So let's take a look at this build six mobility three resilience six recovery that's pretty darn good i know that i'm going to use four mods here to get this to 10 which leaves me one extra mod to put anywhere i want i'm going to put it on discipline so what that means that this build actually looks like for me is five discipline six and four so am i happy with a six three ten five six four maybe but maybe i'm not maybe i can go even lower on resilience maybe i can go even higher on discipline maybe i don't need six intellect maybe four strength is too much and i actually want three so this is where you can start to really fiddle with your filtering system to find exactly what you want. And in next week's video, I'm going to show you how to decide what the perfect amount is because a lot of people go way too much or way too little on a certain stat and there's a very good method to test this. But that's for next week. All right, let's limit our strength because I know I want either three to four strength. If I end up with three, I might just keep it or I'll throw on a strength mod. I do not really need eight intellect, but I mean, if there's some magical build out there with eight intellect that I like, sure, I'll leave it. Discipline, I've gone through enough VOD reviews to recognize that I very much like to have a minimum of five discipline. Now, this is a little bit more tailored to exactly what I'm going to do. Let's have a look. This top build still has 29 tiers. That's great. It's moved some of the mobility and some of the strength away. It's got seven recovery, which is kind of exciting because that means I only need to use three of my mods on seven recovery and the other two mods available, I can put anywhere I want. So that means that this currently showing a 644, it could be a 664. It could be a 754. But let's say I don't really like five mobility and I was really hoping for six mobility. I'll deal with six discipline and then I'll use a mobility mod to get this up to six. Pretty darn good build in my opinion. However, there's two more things I want you to think about. Number one is that I talked about the mod earlier called traction. What it does is it adds five to your stat mix or 0.5 to a tier. So what if this five mobility was actually sitting at 55 instead of 50, let's say. If I add traction, I might actually get the tier six that I have and still still get to use my two freebie mods on this side of the equation. That would be so much better. Another piece that you can think of is powerful friends. If I add that to my class item, this will suddenly go up to seven mobility. So I have a couple of options there. I can either leave this and be happy with seven mobility, or if I add traction and powerful friends, maybe it'll be all the way up to eight mobility. Or if I really like six mobility and I'd rather spend those extra tiers over here, I can limit my filters even more. So let's set mobility to three to four. Now what I've done is I'm forcing the tiers out of mobility and into other areas. And the reason why I uploaded a video last week about being careful deleting certain pieces of armor is that you might think to yourself, great, I just need these three pieces of armor. I'll delete the rest and I'm rock solid. Well, wrong. Lots of new armor is constantly dropping in this new DLC with really high stat distribution from like 60 to 64 quite often. And what I've noticed is that whenever I get a new piece, I can find an even better build 
by swapping out one of these with a new piece or with an old piece. Like I might get a brand new pair of gauntlets and they swap out with these, but then the stat distribution on those new gauntlets works better with an older chest piece. So that's why I hang on to a lot of my gear because this system is so incredible at finding all the perfect stat combinations. My last and final tip is that recovery mods take four in a slot, intellect takes five in a slot when you're putting them into armor. That can be really annoying when you're trying to put other perks in your slots. So what I actually found works best for me is try and set my recovery filter to six as a minimum, because then that way I know I'm guaranteeing myself to use at most four mods on recovery and always have at least one mod that I can add to anything that I want for fairly cheap. The second thing I do is try and find builds that have a little bit higher intellect. I don't put that much attention to it. If there's a god tier build with low intellect, I'm perfectly happy as long as the intellect is a minimum of three. But other than that, if I can have the same build with high intellect naturally, then I know that all of my free mods are only going to have to use three affinity slots across the rest of my armor, if that makes any sense. And if anyone from Dim is watching this, some feedback that I would have that would be incredible in my opinion would be the ability to A, C, more than just one number here specifically because of that traction situation if this could tell me if this was 40 or 49 or 45 or whatever, then I wouldn't have to have the game open on my side to try and figure out if traction is gonna make this build even better. Or if I could somehow limit this to 35 as a minimum, then that could solve it too. Like I think there's a couple of ways to get around that. But either way, I feel like that would be pretty helpful. And another thing that would be really nice is instead of having to scroll down and search for those other ones, like T29 in this case, where I had to scroll from all the way up top, it would be pretty cool if there was like a drop down here or something, then I could at least quickly look and say, hey, anything T27 and under, just omit it. I don't really care about it. I'm only looking at 28s and 29s. Or I could pick 29 specifically and then look at only those. So after I'm done kind of looking at the top one that you show me, I can see if there's a T29 out there that's basically the same except more resilient. And lastly, what would also be cool is that this exclude item option is kind of cumbersome because I have to click them one by one. So let's say I wanted to figure out what my best possible build was with Dune Marchers or Anti wards, I can't do that because I'd have to exclude every single pair of boots in this whole thing. And I can't just click them all in one setting. I have to click one and then it shows up here. Then I have to hit exclude item again. And it doesn't even make that piece disappear. I have to remember I clicked that and then click on the next one and then keep going. So it would be cool if I could just click all of them at once, like this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and omit all of them. Okay, I hope that was helpful. I know that was a really long video and super thorough and probably none of you have made it this far, but if you have, comment, fuck yeah. And I'll just leave it at that and say, have a great day.